Thanks so much, Sandra, and thank you everyone for coming out this afternoon and taking time out of your lunch hour to join us. So this presentation today is about grants to support your business growth. And my name is Scott Hirsch. I'm CTO with Talent Marketplace. But for some reason, grants and applications and that kind of stuff has all fallen under my umbrella too. I think it's because it's very process oriented and very specific and that kind of fits with more of a technical brain too. Um, <clears throat> so why, why should you be listening to me? So first off, so uh, I've been working with Talent Marketplace for a little bit more than four years now. And over that period of time, I think we've qualified for somewhere between three quarters of a million and a million dollars in grants and other government funding that has really supported and helped our business grow, particularly during times of COVID as well. So just jumping right into it, we have a bit of an agenda for today. Uh, why should we apply for grants? How to find those grants? How to, how to actually do those applications for those grants? And then finally, the money shot at the end. Here's a whole bunch of links to grants for money that you can apply for because Fundamentally, I think what we're here for today is to be able to click a link, fill in a form and set up an application for some money and have that money land in. To be completely straightforward here, yes, it's worth your time. There is usually some upfront time, usually maybe one, two, three, four, five hours of application, putting paperwork together, sending that off. There's some reporting throughout the grant period that you might have to do again another few hours there. And then sometimes there's an ending report or something that you have to put together to make sure that the grant program you know, understands the impact that they're intending to have. So overall, usually in total, it takes somewhere between five and 10 hours of work, depending on the size and the complexity of the grant. But in addition to the money aspect of them, um, there's often additional support that's offered with these grants. So sometimes there's additional funding for training that's provided. Sometimes there is you know, direct training that is provided by the grant program, namely courses, mentorship, um, and other pieces of support that can help make that grant and their goals more successful. And finally, there really is minimal commitment to a lot of these grants and the programs that are there. So um, what I mean by that is, is and like even when you send off an application, there isn't a lot of you know commitment that's signed on yet until you've actually signed a contract or um, finalized some of that paperwork. Um, there's usually uh, contingencies in place and the grant program provider will support you in making sure that that uh, placement or whatever it might be is as successful as possible. So there's a lot of support in place and the commitment's pretty minimal. Uh, so secondly, uh, how to find grants. So this is general advice on where you should be looking, how to find them. Um, and this is going to differ slightly based off your location as well. <clears throat> so the first one, Google it, but like seriously though. <laughs> so like this is literally the easiest place to start. Um, so literally you could Google like business grants in BC or if you're in a different province, if you can be more specific about what you're looking for, then uh, that might help too. So like, for example, hiring grants in BC or small business grants in BC, or if you're in a certain industry like uh, te uh, technology grants in BC. But yeah, start with Google, just search for it and you'll be surprised on what you find. The second strategy I can re recommend here is to sign up for email lists. There are certain delivery providers and organizations that are responsible for delivering grants and grant programs that are often offered by provincial governments, municipalities, or federal governments. Um, so in BC, to name a couple of those, there is New Ventures BC or NVBC, Venture for Canada is based out east, Innovate BC is another one that's based here uh, in the province. But overall, there are uh, a number of these email lists that you can sign up for, and then you'll get notifications on when, you know, a period of funding actually opens up. So again, the thing to keep in mind here is a lot of these grants are cyclical, usually they run annually. So they're open for a period of time. They say that application period is March 15th to April 15th. You have to get an application in that time. You have to hire by whatever, June 1st. And then the grant runs for you know six months or three months or whatever it might be um, before wrapping up. So making sure you're signed up for this email list, making sure you're watching those emails so you get notified when those grants actually come available is super important and a great way to find some of those grants. And lastly here, particularly during COVID, is just watching the news around like federal and provincial government announcements specifically, um, particularly early on in COVID, for example, we would hear things about, you know, on the individual side, like CERB and stuff like that. But also on the business side, there's a lot of support that's being announced on a regular basis, um, like the CEBA, the emergency business account there. Um, there's a whole bunch of other relief funds and stuff like that that are out and around for, uh, you know, the tourism sector, um, both based out of BC and also from the federal government there. So uh, keeping an eye on the news allows you to be, you know, uh, keep your finger on the pulse of what exactly is going on and when. And that's actually the earliest way to hear about a program too, because normally what will happen is the 
provincial or federal government will announce a new grant program and it'll sit in the hopper we'll say for another like two or three months before anything happens and then it'll get rolled out so you can usually go to a government site see where that announcement lives follow that page bookmark it maybe there's an email list to sign up for there and then when the actual program is rolled out then you'll be notified or you can check on that so you can be first in line to make sure that you uh, apply for that as soon as that's available now <clears throat> the reason that that's super important is because when we're applying for grants we need to know what to include and exclude so i'm actually going to start over on the right here uh, just based off my previous point around submitting early so many I'm going to even say most grants are only available until funds are consumed, obviously. There's some grants that never get fully consumed, so they're kind of open in perpetuity. Or um, some grants are just based off of the number of applications and they don't necessarily care how much they're spending, but usually there's still a budget in place or something like that. So making sure that you're able to submit early is very important. So even if a grant period is open for two months and they announce that, if the grant funding is all consumed by month one, too bad. <laughs> so you need to be able to apply as early as possible. You want to make sure that you have your ducks in a row for that. So <clears throat> the key piece of information here is just to start doing it. Um, so what I mean by that is the more that you do, the easier that it gets. A lot of these grants and programs are asking for identical things. It's like, tell me about your business. What do you do? Uh, what was your revenue in 2020? Um, give me an example. Give me a business plan here or like what provide the job description for the role that you're looking for hire to hire if you're looking for a hiring grant for example and a lot of these programs again because they're annual they use the same application process every year so a great example of this is the canada summer jobs grant right so it's usually focused on hiring youth usually over the summer uh period and it's the same application process every year it is daunting the first time that you have to go through that there's like four or five six pages on the internet of very long <laughs> forms of like fill in 3,000 words about this thing, right? But um, for the most part, that application doesn't change too much because it's like, what does your business do? Um, what kind of roles are you hiring for? And you can recycle a lot of that if you keep that in an external uh, system, like just stored in Google Docs or something like that. So the more that you do, the easier that it gets because you can recycle a lot of that information. The second and probably the most important piece for the actual grant application process is answering questions directly, simply, and completely. So this is your classic English 101 around, you know, state your thesis, explain it, then restate your thesis at the end. Uh, you want to directly, directly answer the questions as like uh, literally as possible. So if it is, if the question is, uh, name three innovations that your company has, right? So you want to say three innovations that my company has are innovation one, innovation two, innovation three, and then details, 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 and then close with the three innovations that my company has are innovation one, innovation two, innovation three. Make sure you hit every point that the question is asking for and do it as literally and directly as possible. The, re the reason that that's so important is because the way that these uh, grant applications are often graded, particularly at the federal government level, is by like a point-based system. <clears throat> So you want to make it as easy as possible for the person that's reading your application to give you those points, right? So if they say, you know, um, there's three points for innovation one, three points for innovation two, three points for innovation three, you want to make sure you're scoring on all of those areas. So that is probably the most uh, important piece when you're actually going through the application processes for these grants. And the other thing to indicate here is a lot of these are competitive in a sense, right? So they have an application period funds are consumed after a certain period of time, they'll just accept people as they come in. And if you meet all the requirements, you're accepted and then, um, and then funding is consumed and then it's closed. But the alternative is it might just be open for a period of time. They get all the applicants that come in there and then it's competitive. Like whoever has the best application in that period of time ends up getting the funding. Um, so I put together a really big list of grants and stuff like that. Some of them I've kind of divided into two sections. One is non-COVID related that are usually generally available and then some COVID related stuff there too. I'll go through them a little bit to indicate which ones are for, you know, which reasons. So I'll open up some sites here so you can take a look at what they are. Um, and then like I, I'll leave lots of time for discussion and stuff like that. I know you're all busy professionals. So I want to make sure that we get uh, more time back in your day here too. So. Um, just a reminder, this presentation is being recorded and we will send out uh, this presentation too, maybe as part of our like employer monthly email here so we can make sure we get you all into that list there too. 
um, so you can have the direct links to this. So the first one I really want to jump into here is this business benefits finder, because this is actually a great generalized grant search mechanism that the federal government's put together. So I'm just going to open this one up for us. Just all government support. I need whatever grants to keep my employees paid. I want funding. And you just fill in the full wizard there. And then there is a search mechanism as well, uh, where you're able to look for individual uh, grants too. And so this government website is very useful for just doing a quick search on different um, you know, sectors, different support and relief funds that are available for you. There's actually a search wizard that I can't actually quite find here right now, but what will normally happen is after you finish this, uh, this uh, fill-in wizard, then you'll be able to get into uh, that search and find more specific uh, grants for your company too. So this one's actually super handy because it actually, they've updated it to include COVID-19 stuff here too, and that wasn't the case previously, but um, those are different times as well. So that's the first one I would point you to. This one's a very quick way to find stuff that is mostly federally focused. There is some provincially focused stuff that is included in this database too, but um, I would go to some different places to look for provincially based things too. Um, so Talent Marketplace is based in BC. Um, so that's why I focus mainly on BC kind of grants and stuff like that. But if you're located in a different province or jurisdiction, I would encourage you to look at your local organizations as well. Um, but for some of the next ones here, um, they're a little bit BC based. <clears throat> so first one is this New Ventures BC ISI grant. Um, we've gotten this one a couple of times. And again, this is through the New Ventures BC or NVBC organization. And they have a variety of actual um, grants and stuff like that are the, that are available. So again, this is a company well, organization, not necessarily a company that um, I would recommend signing up for the mailing list for <clears throat> because they do actually usually fully allocate their grants every year. So as you can see, it's actually fully allocated for this one. But they have other support and um, uh, other support and programs that are available to you as well. Um, the cool thing about this grant, particularly, I, I actually Sandra went through this grant uh, probably last year, year before, something like that. Um, they have a whole bunch of uh, additional support that comes with the grant besides the money. <clears throat> Pardon me, frog in my throat. Uh, like uh, there's some on entrepreneurship and technology courses that are used to support um, hiring the youth as well. Uh, so that's always a nice little bonus to have along with the grant too. So New Ventures BC, take a look at that. Next one here is Venture for Canada. So this one's based out east, but they have basically two tracks of programs. So one is for interns and one is something we call a fellowship. But the ones I kind of want to focus on here are the more BC based ones, because I think these ones might not be as well known. Um, we hear honestly on the news about these other federal ones pretty often. So I'm going to hop into this more recent one, the BC Small and Medium Sized Business Recovery Grant, because while this one has been out for a while, they have recently, re very recently updated uh, the application criteria for this one. So uh, as recently as March 11th, so a few days ago, <clears throat> Uh, they've updated some of this here, but as of March 4th, they uh, opened up, they re relaxed the requirements for actually applying for this one. So it's more, uh, as long as you can show a one month difference, 30% uh, loss uh, from sometime in 2020 versus sometime in 2019, then you're able to apply for this. Um, the money that is available is ten to $30,000. And if you're in a tourism based uh, business, then you could get an additional on top of that. Uh, five to fifteen thousand dollars. The amount that you get is based off of your loss and your revenue, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you just want to make sure that you go through the eligibility criteria to make sure that you are fully eligible for it. And then you can actually apply for it uh, th through an online portal here too. And again, they are actually really responsive. We've gone through this application fairly recently, and I was, you know, followed up with via email asking for a couple additional pieces of documentation, so I can verify that like this is a, you know, a good and responsive grant. Our money hasn't come through yet, but um, we are, uh, you know, still following up with this one. So, like, I would recommend taking a look at this one if you haven't looked at it recently, because again, they they have recently, very recently, relaxed the requirements on this one. Uh, next one here is the online grant program. So, launch online. Sorry, this is separate from the one that we were just looking at. Uh, but the way that this one works is basically to help uh, businesses that are not currently online with an online store, online presence, 
get to that online store, get online presence, right? So um, you have to put together a bit of a grant proposal to start off uh, that um, indicates how you're going to get your business from your current state to an online state. There's five criteria that um, count as being online or not. And if you meet a couple of those criteria currently, but not three of them, I think it is, then you're still able to apply for this to develop those final three criteria that you might need to be an online business. Um, this is a 75% coverage of eligible expenses. So the way that that works is you would have to spend, for example, $10,000 setting up your online store, and then the government would pay you, pay you back 7,500. Um, and you can do subsets of that too. So like if you paid whatever, $5,000 to set up your store, you would get 75% of that covered by the government too. So again, uh, you want to make sure that you review the eligibility for this one. Um, there is some you know, criteria around this. And those five criteria are these ones here. Um, so if you're not online, it could be a great way to set up an online store or um, you know, make that migration to having a bit more of an online presence. Uh, next one here is a Canada United Small Business Relief Fund. So this one's actually based out of Ontario, which is kind of cool. So yeah, so it depends when they get more money and funding and stuff like that. So programs that are successful, give it all the money and can demonstrate good results are usually refunded or upfunded by the government depending on that. But the way that this one worked um, was basically very similar to the launch online program where there were companies, if you needed some additional help, uh, you know, making the shift online due to COVID-19 circumstances, then this government provided a grant of up to $5,000 to help support that transition. This one is actually pretty lax because like they didn't require too, too much other than just like, what was your shift online? Send us your invoice uh, and show us the results of it. Uh, so this one is actually pretty good. So I would actually recommend, you know, keeping an eye on maybe the Ontario Chamber of Commerce to see if they get some more funding to provide this grant again. Again, another one of those organizations perhaps to sign up for the mailing list for, particularly if you're based out of Ontario, um, so that you can keep an eye on some of these grants. Uh, this is a fairly new one to me, at least, because I only stumbled across this one after looking for some additional funding here. Um, but basically, uh, there's this highly affected sectors credit availability program. Um, the way that this works is it's a guaranteed loan. So you would work with your individual financial institution. So your TD, CIBC, BMO, whoever you're working with currently. Um, and then uh, if you can demonstrate a revenue decrease of 50% or more due to COVID-19, the exact circumstances around that are um, to be defined, then uh, then you can get a loan from your, from that financial institution, but it's backed by the federal government, so you can get a more favorable interest rate. So that can that can help provide some additional money or capital, cash flow, whatever you need for these you know difficult COVID nineteen situation. We're actually personally in the process of doing this one right now, and actually I didn't include this one in the presentation, but regional release. <clears throat> but there's this program too, which is consider it a lender of last resort for COVID-19 circumstances. So if you're really hurting and you're gonna go out of business soon because of COVID-19, take a look at this. They do require that you go through every other possible means first. So like you have to have had applied for the highly affected sectors credit availability program among other um, grant programs like the SEBA and uh, other COVID-19 support before you're able to apply for this one. But, <clears throat> Uh, basically, there's a few different options here, but you could get um, loans of up to a million dollars just based, based off of your projected operating deficit for the remainder of 2021. Um, so the Regional Relief and Recovery Fund is perhaps one more to look at there if you're in particularly dire straits. Um, and then finally, we have the BC Increased Employment Incentive. So this one's kind of cool <clears throat> because this one hasn't opened up for applications quite yet. They're still saying that you can apply online as of March 2021, but this one works as a, if you were growing over COVID, um, particularly from the fourth quarter of 2020 into the first quarter of 2021, then you might be eligible for a bit of a tax credit um, based off of the total payroll from the last quarter of 2020 versus the total payroll for 2021. And you could get 15% of that increase, hopefully, um, <clears throat> as a tax credit back. So keep an eye on this one. If that was your situation as a business, then uh, keep an eye on this page and then you might be able to see uh, the applications open up for March, 2021 uh, and then get a bit of a tax credit back. So those are the ones that I have 
linked down. Um, and hopefully, some of those might apply to you. And you, there's some new information here that you might be able to apply for. Um, um, again, this list and this presentation will be sent out as one of our, along with one of our employer emails here. And this is obviously being recorded. So uh, we'll be able to share that with you um, by YouTube or something like that, too. Um, but that's all I have for here. And that I'll, I'll just leave it at that and uh, open it up if you have any questions about specific grants or applying for grants in general. I'd love to hear if you have anything that I can help answer.